Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Persia in Victoria 2. In the last episode we got out of our uh, great war that we had previously been in, uh, though it went badly, so we are we were um, forced to give a great war capitulation, so we're, uh, we've lost some of our soldiers and our ships and we're not allowed to build any new ones for uh, five years after the peace deal, I think that's about four years from now. So that's unfortunate, we're down to sixth place, uh, partially I assume because our military power is lower on account of that whole thing. Actually, we're still paying our navies and soldiers, or stockpiling goods for them at full, which is not what we want to be doing. Let's uh, get that down, and we can unpause and continue here. So I think it was uh, 1921, I don't forget, don't remember the date uh, that the war ended, so it'll be 26 by the time we can build new things. That's okay though. We can, in the meantime, keep building up our railroads and expanding our factories. I suppose we are still focusing on uh, craftsmen in all of our provinces, or at least our highest population ones. We'll expand anything that's even remotely close to its cap, I think. I want to make sure that we can accommodate new craftsmen as they appear. Um, that seems pretty good for there. Spam these. Okay, that will do for the moment. Uh, we can go to speed 4, I think, and we can increase opinion in King High. Whom we are influencing at the moment. Uh, we have been discredited there by Japan. There is a certain amount of competition going on here. More factory input tech is good. Uh, let's get revolution and counter revolution. Um, okay, uh, we may or may not be able to get them into our sphere at some point. It looks like. Uh, Although there has been competition, nobody else is actively influencing them right now. Um, Grievous Insults, a group of Persian citizens who left Persia some time ago on an expedition to Tibet, has been viciously refused entry to the country. Uh, we can gain the cut down to size CB on Tibet, who, let us not forget, are in our sphere. Looks like um, everything is fine there, nobody else is even trying to influence them. We can gain the cut down to size CB on them and our relations are changed by minus 50, or we can increase our relations, lose a little prestige. And jingoists and pro-military people gain militancy. Um, I don't really want to lose the prestige. We can gain the CB and lose some relations. I don't think that's going to cause us any major problems. It'll put us down to... we'll still be above 100. Obviously, we're not going to use the CB. It's, it seems like it wouldn't really be worth our time. So we have a lot of factories being built. Um, is the US influencing West Morocco? Should probably go up to some influence there, at least just to be passively reducing other nations' influences when, when they aren't influencing themselves. Um, actually, a uh, good thing I checked this, because the UK is at friendly and 73 influence, so they are definitely in need of a banning here. Seems like the US is intermittently 
influencing them. Hopefully they won't be able to get anywhere much uh, military access from Italy. All right, I'll allow it, I suppose. We are still losing money, um, despite the fact that I have reduced my spending here. Uh, quite a lot of it is going on industrial subsidies, it seems. Which is a little worrying. We can afford to keep spending that amount of money for quite some time, so... We'll do that and see if things recover. Um, we can go up to Friendly here. I think we'll wait until we're at 100, though. Alliance offer from West Morocco? Yes, please. Uh, let me just check the rest of my spherelings here. Uh, we have Japan at Cordial in here. And the U.S. at Friendly, I suppose we could consider uh, dropping the U.S. down to Cordial. That might be worth doing. Uh, Tibet, we are okay. No one is above Cordial. And in Egypt, no one above Cordial. All right, then. Tensions in Persian Uzbekia. Well, we'll gain the tension, that's okay. It looks like we're still behind uh, the various Greek territories in tension, so don't need to worry about that. If there is another crisis within the next uh, few years while we're still disarmed, I think we'll do our best to try and sit it out and not get involved in any wars. Sure, we'll allow Austria-Hungary military access. Looks like Russia is having a really bad time against China. Well, it looks worse than it is. They're only at 15%. Uh, the UK and France are actually on Russia's side in that one. Uh, Italy is at war with um, Austria, Hungary, and Turkey. And Turkey. That is interesting. I'm trying to get Venetia. Venetia. Um, Kind of surprised that China is only at 15% in that war. It seems to be going uh, extremely well for them. Well, they, they only have plus 8 from occupation. Alright. Okay, we'll gain some more tension. That's totally fine. Uh, we can't see through the fog of war here, but it looks like China is advancing very quickly through Russia. Uh, we are up to 100 here. So let's increase up to friendly. Nobody is capable of banning or expelling our ambassadors just at the moment, so that's good to note. Right, we gain one more national focus. That's good. Um, let's increase our tax efficiency, and we'll focus on craftsmen here. Looks like China is influencing now. I guess we could ban them. Problem is it kind of leaves us vulnerable to USA. Uh, we don't have to really do anything until they get up to 65, which is the point they could ban us, which obviously would be bad. Okay, I'm going to ban them. The US hasn't influenced them at all in the time I've been watching here. 
so I'm not too worried about them. We should be able to get up to 100 and sphere them. Russia is approaching being fully sieged there. We're certainly uh, merrily adding war goals, even though their war score isn't looking amazing. Italy seems to be doing okay in their war too. Norwegian War of Icelandic Freedom. Interesting. Norway is um, attacking communist Denmark, I guess. All right. Okay, so our crisis is over um, Ecuador, I think. Pastaza, it's somewhere in the general area. But it failed to enlist interest. We are pretty distant from there, so we didn't really have to worry about that. Looks like all of the British territory around here is being sieged by China as well. Even Oman. And West Morocco has got some kind of rebel problems going on, Jacobin rebels. Um, are they dealing with this? Are they doing anything? I don't see their army anywhere. They have no army. Alright, I guess we should probably um, help them with that then. Uh, we don't have access. Tensions in the USCA. Tensions between ourselves and the other great powers have erupted in the USCA over the issues of criminal investigations. Uh, we can gain infamy or lose prestige. I think we can safely gain the infamy. We don't really need to spend any infamy for some time here. Any more permanent prestige, anti-minority agitation, which gives us um, non-accepted culture populations gain militancy and consciousness, or or, um, or rather, and they become more in favor of residency and more fascist, or the ones that are accepted culture become more fascist, and fascists gain militancy. Well, I guess I don't really mind them being fascist. Okay, head there, then there, then there. I think is all their rebels. We can siege back some of their land for them. Kind of wish they would take care of it themselves. We're back up to fifth place, though, so that's good. And King High is back up to 100. Um, seems like the US still hasn't influenced them at all, so we are pretty safe to spend our influence. Uh, I'll keep influencing them at high priority just for the moment. Fascist trade unions. Yeah, let them be more fascist, okay. Yeah, we'll stay at high priority. We might want to drop the US and China down to cordial. Alliance offer from King High, I accept. 
So our sphere is looking a bit more healthy now. That's good. Tensions are dissipating. Um, China, I guess, is still making slow progress in their war. I'm not sure they can gain consciousness. Um, Italy also having pretty good success against Austria-Hungary. Not that surprisingly, Austria-Hungary are in a pretty sorry state these days. Like they're gonna get uh, what they're looking for there. Probably they've added all their cores: Istria, South Tyrol. Uh, I think that's all of their cores. Oh, they also have um, Dalmatia over here. Okay, so they haven't added yet. Colonial incident. So we can get a place in the Sun CV on Russia. Or all our pups become more in favor of jingoism. I'm not sure that's useful to us. I don't know what uh, colonial provinces Russia has. Though they're obviously very weak at the moment. I think these count as colonial provinces, maybe? Over here? Well, we don't really care about our relations with Russia, so maybe we'll uh, get the CB. Okay. So let's see. Akmolinsk, Uralsk, Turkmenia, I think that's uh, nearby. It's not over here. Oh, it was here, wasn't it? Yeah, Turkmenia. Wunderalsk. So we could take a couple of, um, a couple of regions from them, potentially. We could get some oil. That actually does definitely seem like it's worth doing. I think Akmolinsk was uh, a potential target as well. And here, too. So this could be a pretty good opportunity for us. Um, I did want to avoid going to war for a while, um, since we still can't rebuild our military, but you don't have to be too worried about Russia. Um, it seems like the UK and France haven't helped them much at all in their current war. France um, not looking too healthy themselves, of course. Uh, they have no military at the moment, so that kind of explains that. UK is pretty strong, but I'm kind of assuming that they have little or no uh, army in my part of the world, since all of their land in India is fully sieged, and over here in the Arabian Peninsula too. It looks like they are suffering an invasion from China down here as well. Okay, I think um, it could go horribly wrong, but I think there's not much... To prevent us just declaring war on them. Uh, if we declare right now, their allies might not even join because they're already in a war. Which obviously would be, be ideal. We can't actually siege any of the land we want yet. So I guess we should decide which is the best land that we want to declare a primary war goal for. We can afford to add a few more later as well. So Akmolinsk would be this whole area, or the colonial part of it at least. It has some good pops and lots of coal. This region has oil, more coal. Uh, this is Akmolinsk, not colonial Akmolinsk. Hmm. 
so that being the case, uh, Russian Turkmenia, that's, um, is that the land we would be declaring for? Russian Turkmenia, it is, okay. Maybe we declare for that first. Okay, Pops, and definitely some oil. And we can get our armies there very quickly. Okay, we'll go ahead and declare now, I suppose. Um, our allies are very likely to join, which is good. We should also consider getting another great power ally at some point. Um, we can't do this. Do we have a truce? Oh, I didn't actually select my... War goal. Okay, there we go. Alright. We declared war. We'll uh, get our armies in position, I suppose, though there's no point really doing anything until West Morocco refused. All of our allies refused. Uh, that's unfortunate. We are at war with um, the UK and France. That's okay. Peace offer from France. Uh, okay, we can just get the land for free then, I guess. Um, I mean, I'll take this. Zero infamy, some free provinces. Don't even have to fight the war. That seems totally fine by me. Alright, great. Um, well, that was uh, fun and kind of unexpected. Uh, we're out of time for this episode, though, so thanks for watching. And join me again next time.